utterly impossible as are all these events. They are probably as like those that took place as any others that never took person at all are ever likely to be. Particle physics had a curious evolution last century and remains a strangely illuminating example of how rigorous science, based on the well-established linear paradigms of Newton, found itself down an intellectual cul-de-sac. The mysterious inner workings of the atom could not be penetrated and were highly resistant to a clear understanding. Science ran up against the extraordinary realities of approximate location, not as a compromise to precision, but as a precise approximation. Relativity, a clever Swiss invention, I think, distorted even the beloved metronome of time. Quantum theory further entrenched subjectivity into the precise scientific observation. In very simplistic terms, science almost had to embrace a more figurative, dare I say poetic, understanding to proceed. The space itself is a very schizophrenic, um, angular, crystalline, random place. There are no vert clear verticals, horizontals. It's an avant-garde piece of architecture, which is now on top, symbolically on top of the museum, which is very challenging to everyone. And if you look at the building, it has a, a, a strange, uh, futuristic belonging in a very old place. It's, it's a very exciting place. And from my perspective as, a, as a, a, an African artist, to access places that, that work at this level of ambition is unaccessible. The, the idea is, is to get coherence with multidisciplinary things. You've actually got to make something that makes sense. Um, the collaboration mustn't be so costly that it would have been better to work on your own. But it's also happening in a faraway space, uh, in, in a different hemisphere, um, makes it very difficult to do this job. I yeah, built this big model so that I can be in the space, away from the space. I'd say the biggest challenges for me on this uh, job are the scale, the kind of increase in scale. I'm going from small Japanese, this works, to trying to fill... The scale of the room is huge. It's like an aeroplane hangar and you've got to fill it with rocks. And the pixels, are, I don't want to, my normal pixels are about this big now. The, the rocks that I want to take out of the Rhine are about that big. It's a question of resolution. Then you have got hundreds of thousands of pixels and that's beyond, beyond the analog system I use and beyond <laughs> my um, strength of character, let's say. <laughs> um, so this job is a fine arts conversation with social anthropology, uh, and contemporary architecture. Those three things are talking in this contemporary space in Museum de Cultura in Basel. Um, and I'm a fine artist making kinetic sculptures um, in and amongst uh, social anthropology artifacts. It's certainly an achievement. I'm just not sure what we've achieved. <laughs> um, and it's, it's a big undertaking.
been much more interested in, in helping people think about how they think about things. Some people that aren't used to interrogating how things work mechanically are suddenly forced to, how does this thing work, you know, like, more like a kid. It's completely magical seeing seeing those stones. They they do what you've told them to do in a way. Um, but they've also they also there's something they're doing something more. There's something going on there that we're not really in control of. There's some sort of magic like that. Okay, I've got to get this string from there to there, and then down to this rock. We had really had no idea what we were actually trying to do because there was no way to practice it before we did it. So there's a lot of my there's a lot of my knots in this show, so <laughs> let's hope they hold. She's in pain. That that's been a big part of this is the kind of relationship between us South Africans and the Swiss. The opening will be tomorrow. I'm very excited and I'm really glad. 17 kilometers of string, 5,000 beads. Mm, it's got the most pixels. It's definitely the most ambitious thing I've ever made. So it's hoped that you can uh, recognize in these very foreign objects something that is very personally relevant, <laughs> even if it's beyond your cultural literacy or from a totally different time. And really big questions of life um, being presented in this in this show. So let's call this the adult midlife crisis. So we've we've started with coming into the being. The anthropological content is a Hindu creationist myth, um, which is very beautiful and fantastical. It's, it's kind of an allegory for um, coming into consciousness. Um, we've moved to an inherited frame of reference um, or cultural context that you're born into. It might be historic or religious or whatever. There's this real poetic language through the pebble installations of Justin Fisk is, is absolutely amazing. This is, is far more spectacular than I could imagine. Um, we've looked at the architecture We've looked at individual twine and identity and how that uh, moves on into a, a social fabric and an intertwining of um, something more complicated than your own personal independent identity. In terms of sculptural works, there's a suspension of rocks in a cloud. It looks at the um, indi individual markers you leave when you finish, like an anthropological footprint. It's accompanied by this, these zany Mexican figures of mortality. 
And so we've got to the end of this human life cycle where we have to start to deal with uh, getting old uh, and finishing the, the anthropological project of defining yourself. Uh, end of game over, Bell. If you are working so hard for more than seven months and you are working in a, in a very tiny group, this moment of, of opening the doors and showing this to a bigger public, yeah, it's quite exciting and a bit scary as well. You know? <laughs> in einem spielerischen Rahmen der Reflexion über den Kreislauf des menschlichen Lebens verwandelt. There's like a sense of wonder and excitement, like a childlike excitement that you see in adults' faces, which it's not something you get very often. It's completely touching, it's um, amazing how you can transform a room, that the room asks you, sort of being quiet, not something which is forced upon you, but you want to be, you want to follow it. And I've, n I've never ever experienced that kind of, of really touching in an exhibition. And people loved it, they went for it. They got somehow suspended as well. The universe of trade of getting some kind of fantastical explanation for origins of the cosmos. Now we're going to go to what you're born into, the inherited frame of reference. Oh wow. How you can... Things are not what they seem, necessarily. This is, uh, it starts to reveal the, the frame of reference that's hung off of. Yeah, yeah. Exactly the room. <laughs> Sooner or later, it will have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> we were on this the night before. We finished 12 o'clock. This is a much more sophisticated machine. This thing talks to satellites, gets a real time live. And yet, you get a very human kick from this sort of machine. And this which is you like, don't get of course, from I'm talking really. to my brother in the States. Yeah. Zero vulnerable. This, this is a kind of a cauterizing device mm. to your experience. And that can be. That's what we all have to do.